This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Good evening. Welcome to the Jamie Glazoff Moment. Tonight, trying on the hijab. Let's break down stigmas around Muslims and Islam. My friends, oh, what a liberating thing going on in Australia right now. There's a mosque in Australia that's been having non-Muslim women coming in to try on the hijab. And they're doing it because they want to break down any sort of stigma around Muslims and Islam. Now there's a story written about this by Amy McCosker in the magazine ABC Capricornia, the website. ABC Capricornia by Amy McCosker. So I'm going to be quoting out of that right now and I'm going to be referring to it, okay? So the story talks about how at a recent open day at Rockhampton Mosque in Queensland, Australia, the Muslima Nusra Nuradin was heading this whole enterprise at the mosque. And Mrs. Nuradin and her Muslim friends were showing non-Muslim women how the hijab was worn. Because as Ms. Nuradin said herself, it was about a humanizing experience to share your culture with someone directly. Now she's quoted as saying, I've had many, many people come to me and compliment me on my hijab. They sometimes say they really love my scarf and they want to know where I got it. Now this story that, I, that I've mentioned earlier in, in, on this website refers to a certain Sue Finnegan that showed up here in her fellow traveling with this totalitarian ideology and she was trying on the hijab for the first time and uh, she found it to be a warm accessory in the Rockhampton heat and uh, she said that it was so nice to speak one-on-one -on -one with Miss Nuradin. She's quoted as saying, I don't think I I don't think they should be judged. It's a part of their culture. Trying on a hijab may remove people's negativity about it. Oh, thank goodness. We've got to, we've got to remove negativity about the hijab. I mean, come on, you know. Maybe like studying what it really means might be a good idea, but you know, that's neither here nor there. And so this particular Sue Finnegan that's in the mosque uh, is con continued to be quoted, quote, it's been nice to experience wearing it. And not only that, I think it's also about experiencing the whole thing. Trying on the hijab, tasting the food. I have nothing but pleasant thoughts about it today. It was absolutely wonderful. The story goes on to also mention Islamic Society of Central Queensland President Benil Kadarambil. And he says, quote, the purpose is to break down barriers and any sort of stigma around Muslims and Islam. Now, Mr. Kadi Arambo said that the conversation had been between women about the hijabs and that they were, quote, as important to the Muslim women as they were to the visitors. This particular individual is quoted as saying, the Muslim women feel quite empowered when they see people from other faiths come forward and try on the hijab. The non-Muslim people who try it on get to experience a bit of culture that another woman experiences throughout her lifetime. Yeah, okay. I couldn't help from wondering, okay, we're breaking down stigmas, we're busting down the barriers. I'm just curious, when is the day now where the Muslim women in the hijab come over to the Kafir world, the non-Muslim world, and they help with breaking down barriers too, and they take off the hijab? You know, the non-Muslim women are coming over to see what it feels like to wear a hijab. When are, you know, when is there going to be this reciprocity? When are we going to break down all the barriers and, you know, have the Muslim women in hijab come over to a certain place and institution and take off their hijab and just talk about how they feel doing that. No, we couldn't really do that because of Surah 2431 in the Quran, because of Surah 3359 in the Quran that mandate wearing 
the hijab. And if you're not wearing the hijab, hmm, you're allowed to be molested and raped. Oh, how come that wasn't mentioned in that story that I just referred to? I read it a couple times. I didn't find anything about how the Quran mandates the hijab and gives the obvious foundation for the sexual abuse and molestation and rape of women who don't wear one, which explains why what's happening in terms of the Muslim rape gangs in the UK, in terms of how they search out who is not wearing the hijab and how the followers of Sharia, what their mentality is in terms of why Kafir women without the hijab are allowed to be raped. This isn't something that they just thought up. It's something that's in the Quran. And Surahs 2431 and 3359 give the foundation for that. You know, I read this story also that I just referred to several times and all these conversations between the women and, and, and at the mosque and they're trying it on. I, I couldn't help from wondering why didn't they mention the foundation of the hijab itself? You know, like little things like Umar bin al-Khattab, the second caliph. That's how it all started. He was begging Muhammad to enforce the hijab. Hmm, why was he begging Muhammad? Why was Al-Khattab begging Muhammad to enforce the hijab? Do you know? Were the Muslim women telling those non-Muslim women about it while they were trying it on? You see, Al-Khattab was sneaking out into the fields at night, spying on the women who were relieving themselves, going to the quote-unquote bathroom in the fields at that day and he was kind of lurking around the fields spying at them uh, on them yeah yeah and he kind of wanted to do certain things to these women but he wanted to know he wanted to make sure that he didn't assault or do certain things to these women who were part of Muhammad's world part of Muhammad's tribe those who followed Muhammad. So he kind of asked Muhammad, could you kind of put a hijab on the ones that, you know, kind of are in your camp so I can do what I got to do? Hmm, I wonder if that's at all connected to why Surahs 2431 and 3359 say what they say. I wonder if this has anything to do with the sexual violence that Muslim women face when they don't wear the hijab and when non-Muslim women don't wear the hijab and are around Sharia communities and what happens to them. This story also didn't mention at all people like Aksa Parvis, victims like Aksa Parvis, the 16-year-old girl that was strangled by her Muslim father in Toronto 10 years ago for not wearing a hijab. It doesn't mention Amina Muse Ali, a Christian woman in Somalia, who Muslims murdered because she wasn't wearing a hijab. It didn't mention Maide Khajabri, the young 18-year-old girl sitting in prison in Iran today because she was caught on social media not wearing a hijab. Robert Spencer has written an article, Illinois pro-hijab propaganda on billboards. Robert Spencer's article, Google it, Illinois pro-hijab propaganda on billboards gives an account, a documented account, of so many women that have been murdered for not wearing the hijab because of Sharia and under Sharia. Why didn't this story mention it? Why isn't that mosque uh, telling the non-Muslim women about this? I can't help from wondering what's next at this mosque. They're having the wear hijab day. I can't help from wondering what's the next day. Female general mutilation day? Does it start with trying on the hijab and then they kind of move you into a back room? They fly in the uh, FGM cutters as they're doing today in, in UK and throughout the world. They have an FGM day. And those of you that are right now are saying, oh, Jamie, you're just being so judgmental. Female general mutilation has nothing to do with Islam. It's cultural. No, sorry. Reliance of the Traveler. Abu Dawood, Sahih Muslim, Sahih Buhari. All, those are the Hadiths, Reliance of the Traveler is the manual on Sharia law. All of those Islamic texts mandate FGM, and that is why female genital mutilation is practiced in so many Islamic environments, in Iraqi Kurdistan, in Egypt, in Indonesia, in Muslim parts of India. 
throughout many, many um, re uh, Muslim regions and environments throughout the world. So I'm wondering, when is FGM Day at this mosque? And then what do they do after that? Do they have a, a day where they kind of role play? Or maybe not even role play. It's the honor killing day for the women that don't follow Sharia. Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, fellow traveling at its height. Propaganda, brainwashing, indoctrination. My book, She Had a Psychopath, unveils and explains why these, these twisted, morbid charades are going on right now, like at this mosque in Australia, with where the hijab day, that's, that's really a worshipping at the altar of totalitarianism trivializing, minimizing, pushing into invisibility the millions of women suffering under Sharia and at the hands of Jihad. Jihad a psychopath explains why this process is happening. And you know, I can't wait to see what's happening next at the Rockhampton Mosque in Queensland, Australia. What's the next step? I'll see you on the next Jamie Glasoff moment. Good night.